Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and in this video I'm going to show you how to handle the errors in your pivot tables. So in this pivot table here I have these divide by zero errors here in this attainment column and basically this attainment column is a calculated field that's taking the revenue and dividing it by the forecast number. And you can see in these rows here where I don't have a forecast, it's either zero or blank, then I'm getting this divide by zero error here in the pivot table. So there's an easy way to turn this off. If you go to the Analyze tab here on the ribbon, or this is called Options in Excel 2010 and earlier, uh, basically here on the uh, pivot table menu, you click the Options button. You can also right click the pivot table and select Pivot Table Options, and that'll bring up this window here. And there's an option right here under the format section uh, that says for error values show. And then if you check this, you can then select or input what you want to show when there's an error. So if we just leave that zero there, then when there's an error, uh, it'll return a zero instead. So if I hit OK now, you can see that changes my error amount to zero. And you can also change that. Again, you can get to that uh, by just right clicking anywhere in the pivot table, go to pivot table options. That'll bring up this menu. So you could also change that to blank. If you didn't want to show anything there, you can just delete the zero and uh, then hit OK. And now you'll see that there's just a blank there uh, for this particular divide by zero error. And you can also put text in there as well. So again, I'll go back to that menu. And if you wanted to, you could put any kind of text you want. So maybe you want to put something like no forecast, this text here, and then hit OK. And that'll show those that text right there when there's an error. So that's a good way for this to maybe stand out a little bit because this tells us that the rep, this particular sales rep, didn't enter a forecast for this time period. And uh, that's why we're not seeing this attainment percentage calculated over here. So as you can see in this pivot table options menu, there's a ton of options here on all these different tabs for you to choose from to get your pivot table to be laid out in the way you want it. And this can sometimes be very time consuming to go in and have to set these up uh, every single time you create a pivot table. So the uh, pivot, the pivot pal add-in has a feature called my pivot layouts. And it's basically uh, on this, this ribbon here. Once you install the add-in, you'll see the Excel campus tab and then the pivot pal section will be right here and there's this button that says pivot layout and basically this lets you set up your own custom layouts for all of these settings including the air value setting all of these settings for the pivot table so you can then save your own custom layouts or custom profiles and quickly apply them to a pivot table every time so for example I'll just show you how this works real quick if we had this pivot table here and let's say maybe we had the region in the rows area as well well so now our pivot table looks like this and we kind of have a region roll up going here with these subtotals at the top this would be kind of a default layout for the pivot table and sometimes we want to move those subtotals to the bottom we might want to handle our air differently every time or just have it return a zero or a blank so we'd have to go in to the uh, pivot tables options menu and make all those changes you might also have to make the changes up here on the design tab of the ribbon with the subtotals and all these different menus you'd have to go through. So the pivot uh, layouts tool, this pivot layouts tool basically allows you to select all of those options right here in this menu, just select them one time and then save the layout. And then you'll have different layouts here that you can basically save and customize. So one of my favorites here is this uh, compact with totals at the bottom. So I just select that and hit the apply button here. And now you can see it automatically makes all those changes, all of these options and settings, it makes all those changes to the pivot table immediately. So all I have to do is click one button and that'll work. And you can see with the error values here, I currently have it set to skip. That just means that it's not gonna make any uh, changes to the error values setting. It's skip is one of the options. You could also have the error values off or the air values on. So if I turn the air values on and then just put a zero in here and now click apply, that's gonna then apply that 
uh, error value of zero every time here, every time I apply this particular layout. So I just saved that layout, and now every time I come in here to this My Pivots Layouts window, I can just choose any one of these uh, options here. So if I want to see tabular with subtotals at the bottom, hit Apply. You can see that makes a totally different uh, kind of layout here with the subtotals at the bottom like that. I also might want to have an outline with repeating labels click apply. That's another one I use a lot. So you can totally customize this to whatever you want. And basically all you have to do is open this window, click on the one you want and click apply. And that'll apply all of your settings here automatically. So you don't have to waste time doing that every time you create a pivot table. So hopefully that helps you get your errors cleaned up in your pivot tables. If you'd like to learn more about the PivotPal add-in, please click the link below the video and that'll take you to the PivotPal page where you can learn about more about all these great features. Uh, PivotPal is packed with a ton of additional features that'll help save you a lot of time when building your pivot tables. So again, I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a comment below with any questions. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.